Welcome. Oh, welcome. Welcome. So good. I could ask you this morning. Um, if on this Sunday, the 12th of May, the seventh Sunday after Easter, last Sunday before Pentecost, uh, welcome to all of you. It's good to see you here this morning. Those of you who are in person, those of you who watch online, either today or later on in the week, we welcome you all. Um, it's been a beautiful few days. Uh, the weather seems to have dissipated slightly today. Um, slightly unfortunate for the Euro Highland Games in the Battery Park in Greenock. But it's a great place for it to happen. Nice and handy. Indeed, it gets even better for us because because the Highland Games are on, the traffic warden's out making sure that nobody can park. Means we can get out. Anyway, welcome to this morning's service. Um, we're talking about standing together, standing together, stronger together uh, is kind of the theme this morning. Um, and as we come before God in our worship and in our praise, we do so as sharing with our gathering song, which is welcome everybody, it's good to see you here. Welcome everybody, it's good to see you here. Welcome everybody, it's good to see you here. Gathering in this place. We stand to sing. If you are able, please be upstanding. If not, please feel remain seated. Speak to one another, shout across the aisles, wherever you are. The intimations for this morning have been playing in the way in. They're also available, uh, been sent out via email, and uh, they are available online through the service. If we can just go to them quickly, that'd be great. Next Sunday, the service will be usual time of uh, 10 o'clock here, 11.30 at St. Ninian's. Um, next Sunday service will be conducted by the Reverend Anne Fife as next Sunday is the start of the General Assembly and I am at the General Assembly this year. So, um, can I remind you that means that I will not be around, I'll be around this week but not next week. Uh, elders district books um, for the forthcoming communion are available in the front pew. Um, my vicar chair, Vicar Fletcher Burses, this is quite important. This is for um, children, young people who are going on to further education. We can offer a bursary um, of, I, I can't remember how much it is this year, but uh, we're looking for applications and Jim uh, Hempsey and myself have application forms. If you know of any young, pe young person going on to further education, please tell them to get in touch with us and we'd be delighted to give them money. Isn't that a good idea? Great thing, I think it's wonderful. Um, also, I should say today, after the service this morning, there is an informal communion around the table. If you'd like to join with us, please just wait behind after the service. The Wednesday lunches are back up and running, and the next one will be on the 22nd of May. Um, the Guild meets on the 14th of May, and next one, thank you. Um, Dementia Cafe meets on Friday. Uh, 2 to 3.30 and all will be made most welcome. You should go to the Dementia Cafe just for the cakes. They are well equipped. They are very well provided for with cakes. And that is very impressive for these. And they make you very, very welcome. Even better with the new wee seating bit out the back. Uh, the back of the hall, it really is fantastic just to take a time to sit and reflect. I should say that the seating, the seating at the back is available for anyone during the week as well. If you just want to take a few moments out to sit and reflect, please do utilise the benches. That is what they're there for, particularly when it's nice weather. Um, good news. Does anyone have good news? 
Go for it. <laughs> Sorry, Alan. <laughs> Oops. Well, I hope you do, I hope your appeal is successful against your parking ticket. Um, good news, congratulations to Gordon Hamilton, whose birthday was last Friday. Happy birthday, Gordon. You're up the back. We hope you had a good day. And happy birthday to Frank Gardner, who's not here, but Frank. No, he is here. Sorry. Sorry, Frank. I've got new glasses. Frank, uh, his birthday is tomorrow. So happy birthday to you tomorrow. So congratulations to both. Give them a round of applause. Good news too, Kilmarnock won yesterday. Uh, that means that we are now definitely going into European football. Um, last time we did this, Kilmarnock ended up playing their European game in Wales. So it was a nice European trip. Didn't last long. This year, my nephew's hoping for Azerbaijan. I don't even know where Azerbaijan is. I think it's the Caucasus, isn't it? Is it that way? Anyway. So we'll wait and see what happens, but uh, good news anyway. Um, good news too about the weather, and it's um, always been on. I forgot about this, and you know some of you, they won the Bible competition, didn't they? That was two weeks. Yeah, the football, which is fantastic. So it's two weeks ago, because I... I uh, two weeks because I've been used to it. Two weeks ago, they, they actually won the Bible competition, which is retained their title, I think is the way to put it. Retained their title, which is fantastic. And then just uh, just last week, they were runners up in a, real, a newly revitalized seven aside summer football competition run by the battalion. So, congratulations to our junior section. I think we should give them a round of applause. Also, on good news, on Friday we had the um, prize giving and display of our company section, um, and it really was a good, a great night. But with the addition of the nine boys being um, uh, promoted to the company section from junior section, the company section now just stands at under four, just about 40 boys, which really is absolutely fantastic. It shows a company in good heart. That's down to good leadership. Um, and commitment from the leaders, and a huge congratulations to all involved. It really was great um, to see the company in such good heart. Although, I've got to tell you, if you weren't there, they took everything away from the chancel area here, and they set up um, for gymnastics. Now, I would show you what they did, <laughs> but I won't. But one thing they did was they had a trumpet, and I suddenly realized there's a far easier way to get up from our gallery than the steps. You just put a trampoline. Indeed, they could even probably make the pulpit, which would be a novelty because I don't really use it that often. So, uh, But yeah, so it was really absolutely fantastic to, to, to watch. They also built a pyramid of bodies that got right up to the pulpit, so it was well done. So it was a really good night. These are all the intimations and good news. Let us come before God in our worship and praise. Our first hymn, um, there are actions to this. See, talk about being a pyramid. It feeds in nicely. Um, I am the church, you are the church. I am the church, you are the church. We are the church together. You're supposed to try and link arms. Um, I think I've got the book here. Hang on. What number is that again, Calm? Can you remember? Two four, thank you. Oh! I am the church, you're the church. Shake hands with the person next to you. Yeah. We are the church together. All who follow Jesus, reach out with both hands. Circle all around the world. Yes, we're the church together. We will try and link arms across the, gal across the rows. This will be a challenge. We can do this. Okay. So let's stand and sing together. I am the church, you're the church. We are the church together. We stand and sing together.
last verse. There's one more verse, isn't there? Is there one more verse? No, is that it? Oh, we'll sing the chorus again then. My intention this time is we try and get the whole church joined together somehow. Okay, this is up to you to figure out yourselves. Okay, we'll try and see how we go. So we'll sing the chorus again, Callum. Okay, thank you if you don't mind. Okay, we'll go after, we'll go after three. One, two. Give yourselves a round of applause. Well done for giving that try. <coughs> Good morning. You're, you're quite happy down here, aren't you? Hello. You having fun? What are you up to? You're making a bear's home. Do you know if you go onto... No, you don't, that's too common. If you go onto um, internet and put in uh, Vancouver um, Grouse Mountain, you can go in and see a bear sleeping. They're back up, they're actually up now because you can, they, they, you've got a camera right in the bear's hut. Well, this morning I'm thinking about something slightly different, not bears, I'm afraid. I'm thinking about um, how we've all got a part to play in things, how we've all got something to do, and, and how, how we've all got a part to play. Are you both at school? Yes. You're at school? Yes. Your nursery? Do you enjoy your nursery? Do you enjoy your school? Wait, is it Moorfoot? Moorfoot School? No, which school is it? Elim, of course it is. I was in Friday. Do you know, I love Daily Mill on Friday. And we got on the talk about ages. And I made a mistake. I asked, how old do you think I am? Do you know what the consensus of opinion was? 37. <laughs> Apart from one wee boy, he said 72, but we got rid of him. <laughs> Do you know they did say 37, wasn't it? That was the guesses. And it turned out I was younger than the head teacher by six months. So, but I'm thinking about, we're just saying a song about I am the church, you're the church, we're the church how we've all got a part to play and how old do I think the rabbit is that's more difficult to gauge is that a rabbit or a guinea pig it's a definite rabbit and look at the years of course sorry silly me I think that I think the rabbit's about three years old only one well he's doing well for one then so we've all got a part to play. I'm the church, you're the church, we're the church together. And, you know, when you come to church on Sunday morning, you see me as the minister, obviously. You do know I'm the minister. Good. Hi, I'm David. I'm the minister. The dog collar's the giveaway, if you can see it. It's kind of there, right? It's choking me sometimes. My dog collar chokes me occasionally. I call it the slipped halo the halo that slipped. So, everybody sees that they assume that the service is all down to me, but it's not because Callum, Callum's at the back there. Callum, stand up for a second, will you? Callum's the organist and guitarist and general music provider. And we would have, wouldn't have any music if it wasn't for, for Callum. We could play it on the internet, but it's not the same. And then, of course, no, stay standing. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Then we've got Ian. Ian, stand up. Ian's acting as our church officer. Ian's there every Sunday, and very, I think he's actually, Ian lives here. We don't like to tell people, but he actually stays here, you know, because he's always here, and he does a great job. He says, Ian's involved, and Ian keeps me right, which is no mean feat, you know. It's a difficult job, full time. So Ian's busy as church officer. We've got our AV team in the gallery. You can't see them, but I can, because they're keeping me right. Stand up, Alison, put it on. Stand up. Okay, they're at the back, you see. With, nothing would happen with the AV without them because I can't do PowerPoint or change slides or make the microphones work. All I do is talk. 
So I need them. And then, of course, who was in the door team today? Can the door team stand up? So we had people in the door team welcoming you on the way in to make sure that everybody was come in. And then, of course, we've got people who are making the tea and coffee afterwards. Can you stand up for me, please? There's tea and coffee afterwards. <laughs> I think there's scones as well. I, thought I saw something being buttered, so there's definitely something as well. Um, so without them being here as well, and I'm not just stay standing for a second, thanks. And, um, of course, sometimes you go out to the young church, and for the young church, we need the young church leaders. Dan, do you want to stand up, thanks? <laughs> need you people to be in the young church because if that didn't happen now of course we've got the choir well i say a choir we're down to a duo this morning so i need my duo thank you stand up thanks so um and then of course if you're here as a member of the congregation would you stand up this morning just if you're here this morning so you see you're all involved in this as well because you being here as a congregation there wouldn't be a service and if there wouldn't be a service i'd be in bed Maybe not. But the point is, we've all got a part to play. We all do something in this service. We are here to lend our voices. We're here to worship, and we worship together. I am the church. You're the church. We are the church together. And when we are together, we're stronger because there's more of us, because we're one. And that's what's so important that we remind ourselves that we are one in God, one church, one faith, one Lord. One of the great things about Guruk is we work together so well ecumenically with our brothers and sisters in the Baptist church and in the Roman Catholic church and even with other Church of Scotland's. <laughs> I mean, that's pushing it, isn't it, really? Seriously. But we do, and that's one of our strengths, working together, being together, sharing together. And one of the best things we do is coming together every Sunday to worship and to praise. And you're not just idle observers, but you participate. Because we bring our prayers we bring our worship, we bring our voices, we bring our concerns and needs before God. So we actually share in the service. You don't just watch the service, but you share in it. And that's what's so important. Have a seat. I am the church, you're the church, we are the church together. And when we are together, we are strong. And when we are strong, we can speak to our community with a voice that declares the good news of God's love. Good news of hope in the midst of the despair that we see around us in our world and in the horrors sometimes of all that's going around us in the world. And the great thing for us here today is we are free to do this. In other parts of the world, people can't meet as Christians because people are against them. But we've got that freedom and we give thanks to God for that freedom. And we pray for our brothers and sisters in Christ, wherever they are, that they may know that freedom too. Today is the start of Christian Aid Week. And that Christian Aid Week reminds us to focus on the needs of all our brothers and sisters all around the world and to remind us that we are together, that what happens here affects other places as well. And we are all interconnected as one family, one people, all the children of God. You are the church, I am the church, or even the other way around. But at the end of the day, we all are the church together. Next week, we will be, there will be envelopes for Christian Aid Week. They should have been here this week, but I forgot. I've still got my holiday brain on. So we did forget them, but they will be here for next week. And we will be taking an offering for Christian Aid to support the work that is so vital in so many places. We come to get together to share in our prayers 
and we do so aware that we are one in God. And to finish our prayer, we share in the words that he taught us to say as a family in the words of the Lord's Prayer. Let us pray. Loving God, hear the prayers of your people today as we come before you. God, our maker, you have called us to be with you today. We come together today just as we are with all our many different gifts, talents, and abilities. We are thankful that you have all called, you have called each one of us here today. We are your children. You are our God. And to you we place our trust and faith. Loving God, you are with us in good times and difficult times. You bring us together to join in worship and the work of serving others. And we thank you that we have been called by you. Lord, we have all made mistakes. We've hurt ourselves and others. We've not always listened to you or followed your will, thinking, Lord, that we know better when we don't. But the great thing is you have shown us through Jesus Christ that you are always ready to forgive. You are always ready to be there for us and that we have all been called by you. Loving God, we say thank you and give you praise today that we live in the light of Christ's love and that through his new life, heaven's future starts now. For we have all been called by you. We are one family and we are united together, standing strong in the call of your love. Father, hear these our prayers and grant us your peace, your grace. We pray through Jesus Christ and empowered by the Holy Spirit. And to you, O Lord, we lift our hearts and voices as one as we share in the words that Jesus himself taught us to pray as a family, we say together, Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come. Your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. I missed one other piece of good news, and it's really good news for all of you. The clock's back in the gallery. I now know how long I'm talking for again. Good news all round, really. We're going to stand and sing together from Junior Praise, Colors of Thee. And please note, shiny guitar, very shiny guitar, beautiful guitar, we stand to sing. I don't actually like this guitar. <laughs> <laughs> My other one's in the shop getting adjusted, it's being adjusted. We stand to sing.
has come, the sun came to die, the evening draws on, the sun disappears, but Jesus is living and his spirit is here. So light up the fire and let the flame burn, open the door, let Jesus return, the King of his spirit, let the truth go, tell the people. This morning, uh, readings this morning are, are short, um, but they are very important. The first one is from Acts chapter 1, and it's dealing with the situation following the death and resurrection of Jesus, and of course the death of Judas, where the disciples decide that they need to have another disciple brought in to maintain their number. So we're going to hear that first of all from Acts chapter 1, verses 15 to 17. And then verses 21 to 26. And Carolyn's going to lead us in our reading this morning. So Acts 1, verses 15 to 17, then then verses 21 to 26. Those days... A group numbering about learning Judas It's a wonderful story. Here is uh, the disciples meeting post-resurrection, unsure of what to do, unsure of what's happening, and they know they need to redo or fulfill the post left by Judas. They have two candidates, and they ask God for guidance. And then what do they do? They cast lots. It's the equivalent of tossing a coin, heads or tails. Have you ever done that? How many times do you get it right? Heads or tails. Eventually, there's a. I remember doing a science, a maths experiment um, in school about probability and tossing the coin, heads or tails, how often it would come down on heads, how often it would come down on tails. And of course, the idea is if you do it long enough, it will be equal because the chances are equal. You've got 50 50 chance. It seems a strange way of picking your next candidate, isn't it? It's a bit like having a job putting it out for um, for applications, getting applications, whittling them down to two, and then standing them there and tossing the coin. Well, that's what they did. Because they're seeking God's guidance and who's going to fulfill that position. Why did that position need to be filled? That's the key thing for us today as we think about coming back, uh, bringing people in and making use of people's skills. We're going to remain seated as we sing together hymn CH4, hymn 550, as the deer pants. We'll remain seated for this one, as the deer pants. The deer pants for the water so, so longs after you. Worship 
want you more than gold or silk. Only you can satisfy. You alone are the real joy giver and the apple of my eye. You alone are my strength, my shield. To you alone may my spirit yield. You alone are my heart's desire, and I long to worship you. You're my friend and you are my brother, even though you are a king. I love you more than any other, so much more than anything. You alone are my strength, my shield, to you alone may my spirit yield. You alone are my heart's desire, and I long to worship you. This time from first, the letter of 1 John, chapter 5, and verses 9 to 12. This passage is talking about the role of testimony people giving testimony to their faith. So we read from 1 John chapter 5, verses 9 to 12, and again, Carlin will lead us in our reading. For he accepts man's testimony, but God's testimony is greater because it is the testimony of God, which he has given about his Son. Because he has not believed the testimony God has given about his son. And this is the testimony. God has given us eternal life, and this life is in his son. He who has the son has life. He who does not have the son of God does not have life. Thanks be to God for these readings from his holy word, and to his name be all the the praise and the glory. To sing 192 from TH4. All my hope on God is founded.
with God the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. One God. What was the end? Amen. I wonder do how many of you know how many people, how many players are there in a basketball team in the start of a game on the court? How many people? Six? Seven? Five? How many players are there in the start of a game in a rugby league team? 13, spot on, Jim. Yeah, 13. 13. Of course, for a rugby union, it is 15. Which then reads the question, how many people are in the team or fielding in the start of a game of cricket? Well, the answer to that is, who cares? (laughs) Sorry. <laughs> How many? Oh dear. <laughs> um, how many players are on each team in the start of a game of football? Eleven. But there's a whole more behind them. There are the substitutes waiting to come on on the bench. And in every game, it's very rare now for a whole game to go through without players being substituted. Same in a basketball game, there's constant substitutions. In any game, indeed, um, ice hockey, I think, is one of the most interesting to watch in terms of the substitutions being made as players come onto the ice and other players go off that changeover period. It really is fascinating. But why? Why are there 13 players in a rugby league team? Why are the 15 in rugby union? Why are the 11 in a game of football? Why can't there be 12 or 13? Why? Who decided? What made that decision? We just accept that this is what it is now, a days, but who made the rules? Who decided that's how many should play? I remember being in school. Yes, I do remember that far back. I remember the games of, pl- of football in the playground. We didn't exactly stick to 11. It was just whoosh, scrum. Anybody could take part. And yet it still worked. Kind of. But why do we have these numbers that you've got to have so many players? And yet every player has got a job to do in any game, in any role. They've got specific roles. Obviously, in football, the most obvious one is the goalkeeper. He's the only person allowed to handle the ball. In the area, of course, not outside the area, that causes problems. They've all got specific roles to play, and you need your different players to do the different things. When you're watching the game, you get annoyed if your defenders don't defend properly, if your attackers don't attack properly, and if your strikers fail to score a goal, or if the goalkeeper fails to save the goal. All of them have got specific roles to fulfill. And so it is with the disciples. After Jesus had been betrayed, handed over, executed on the cross, and then had appeared to them in the resurrection, and then ascended to heaven. We are are now in the period of post-ascensionism. Here the disciples are figuring out, where do we go from here? And what's their first move? The first move in Acts chapter 1 is to bring their numbers back up to 12 disciples. Remember, that's the 12 they started with. There's only one missing. Judas, who had betrayed and gone off and taken his own life. So they had to bring it back up to 12. 12's a significant number in the Bible. You've got the 12 tribes of Israel. And so that number appears quite a lot. And you can understand why they're going to keep to that. And each of the disciples has got different roles. If you remember, Judas had a particular role. Can you remember what Judas' role is as a disciple? Do you know what his role was? He was the treasurer. Just saying. He was the treasurer. He was the one with the money. He picked up Jesus a couple of times when Jesus did things that he thought were a waste of money. 
still get that at home as well. Anytime I go to Costco, I get the same wrecker when I come home. Why did you buy that for? It was a bargain. <laughs> but they'd all got specific roles and jo- jobs and duties to do. Now, the idea of disciples is important to us because we know who they are. They are named, but we know there are many other followers of Jesus, <laughs> not just whoa, not just female, because notice what they do. It's one man replacing another. You see that? Do you notice that in the scripture? It was one man replacing another. But there were already many female followers of Jesus. If you read into the reality of the Acts of the Apostles and then some of the, the letters, through, and First John's a good example of it. These le- First John is, le- we think, is probably written by the same author of John's Gospel because it's very spiritually based. But there's a lot of women who are organizing services and involved in the transmission and sharing of the work that the church is doing. They're maybe not as named as much because you've got to remember all of this is happening within the context of a very patriarchal society in which the man's the boss. I just leave that with you as well. Indeed, sometimes it still still happens. I remember not so long ago in um, Hamilton Presbytery, um, because in the Church of Scotland, obviously we've got we've had women ministers for many years now, and we've also had female elders for many years as well. But there's still some congregations where that's an anathema. I remember going to a congregation in Lanarkshire, centre of Lanarkshire, and they'd, we identified as with a colleague, and we're doing a congregational visit, and we identified that the whole eldership was male. And every new elder coming on was another male. And we challenged them, why do you not have any female elders? Do you know what their answer was? None of them were good enough. But on a Sunday morning, 90% of the congregation was female. There's the anomaly. We've all got jobs to do. We've all got a role to play. And part of that role is also within the context of testimony. Giving testimony to our faith and what our faith means to us. As I started off at the beginning saying, I am the church, you're the church, we are the church together. For most people, they seem to be, I am the church is the minister because you're the visible one. But you are the church. And part of your role as a church is to give testimony to your faith, what you believe in, to share that and not be afraid to share it or shy. How many of you are shy? Naturally. How many of you, I'm shy, I just hide it well. How many of you feel quite happy talking to Um, friends or neighbours about, oh, let's think, the type of music you like. How many of you feel happy talking to your friends or neighbours about your political views? Oh, there's a good way to start an argument, eh? Or uh, which football team you support? How many of you are willing to talk about your your friends and neighbours about what your faith means to you? That's what giving testimony is about. And that's our role within the church. And it's an important role because it can change lives. There is a a theory in um, the world out there called the butterfly effect. Have you heard of this? That a butterfly flutters its wings in South America and the effect is felt all the way across the world. But there's a truth in that theory in that our actions have reactions and consequences that can go beyond our knowledge. And so we are called to fulfill our role, to take our part, to be the people that Christ calls us to be. And for us, that call is not random. It's not the tossing of a coin like Matthias became a, Matthias became a, a disciple. 
our call, our call is from God. And he calls us to give testimony. A testimony of his love. Testimony of his grace. And to stand firm in that love and grace. And allow us to change a world from hate to love. To allow us and have impact in a world to bring peace in the midst of war. To bring freedom for those who are oppressed. Our actions have consequences. And when we stand together, we can make a difference. Have you ever heard Paul McCartney's song, The Frog Chorus? <laughs> Why did this come into my mind? The, have you ever heard the frog chorus? Oh, if you've not heard the frog chorus, go home today. If you've got an Alexa, say, Alexa, play Paul McCartney, The Frog Chorus, and just sit there and enjoy. If you haven't got Alexa, go onto your tablet, your computer, your phone, Put in the frog chorus. And basically it's, it is, we all stand together. But that's what our, we are called to be as a church. I'm the church. You're the church. We are the church together. Not just here in this place. That's easy. Being together here is easy. about being together with our brothers and sisters in Christ all over the world. To identify with those who find themselves being persecuted in areas of the world because of their faith. To stand together with those who live in the reality of absolute poverty. To stand together with those who find themselves at the very forefront of violence and hatred and war in Gaza, in Ukraine, in Sudan, and so many other places. We all stand together. And one way we can show our togetherness is by supporting organizations like Christian Aid, by through who, through their work, give testimony to God's empowering love, who give testimony through a real dynamic of God's grace. We all stand together. Because I am the church. You are the church. And we are the church. Together. That's the way it should be. So let's be that testimony driven congregation. Showing our witness and faith, not just by coming here on a Sunday morning, but by living our faith out and embodying the very context of God's love, grace, and peace. Witnessing Jesus Christ as our Lord and Savior and standing together with all who identify and share our, our message and with those who don't. And stand together for justice and hope and peace and love. And just maybe we can make a difference. But it only happens if we stand together. So let us come before God and sing as one in the reality of our worship. Sing to the Lord a joyful song. Attention's required by Norton, but we'll ignore that. Sing to the Lord a joyful song.
I gave you good news that the clock was fixed or a new clock was in place. Let me share some bad news with you. I can't see the hands. <laughs> Even with the new glasses. Thank you. Oh, look, my walk. I'm looking through the talking clock across here. What time is it showing up? <laughs> Nearly 11. Nearly 11. for others, our prayers of intercession. Uh, we pray especially for the work of Christian aid at this time of service. Loving God, you call your people to work together for the transformation of the world, that it might better reflect your love and generosity as you always intended it to do. Today we pray for the work of Christian aid as they pursue a world where everyone can live a full, productive life. Free from poverty, free from violence, free from oppression and hate. We pray for the Christian aid as we work for peace. Lord, let your justice flow. As we work to bring an end to poverty, as we campaign for climate justice, as we champion gender justice, as we seek to empower communities, as we deliver aid to disaster zones, as we connect thousands of churches which give, act and pray. Lord, let your justice flow through the work of Christian aid that in its name may be reflected our call to stand together to be your disciples, not just 12 apostles, but many millions and millions of people the world over proclaiming and giving testimony to the living Christ as Lord and Saviour. Lord, may we heed your call through Christian aid to work for justice, dignity and equality where all people might find acceptance in your church. For I am the church, you're the church, but we are the church together. Together with you through Jesus Christ and empowered by the Holy Spirit. So as your church today, we offer our prayers, not just for the work of Christian aid, but for our, the, all within the needs within our com own community. We pray for those who are struggling in the decisions of life, those who are struggling in the reality and face of illness, either at home or in hospital. We remember those who live with the reality of pain of bereavement and know that that reality of loss. We pray for your comfort, strength and peace to be with all your people, O oh Lord. We remember our young, all who teach them in our schools, colleges and universities. We remember our old, especially all who care within the community or within care facilities and homes. We remember all in our society today, Lord, who are struggling and in difficult straits. Empower us to be your community that cares. Empower us, Lord, to share the good news, not just through words, but through our actions and reaching out to those in need. We offer our prayers for our brothers and sisters in Christ, wherever they may be. We offer our prayers for our families and friends, our neighbours and work colleagues, those who we meet in our social pursuits, those who we know, those who we just know by saying hello to in the street. We offer our prayers, Lord, for all. And we bring to you now our own concerns, needs and problems. And in the silence of this place, we bring our prayers to you. Lord, in your mercy, Hear our prayers. As, O oh God, as your people diverse, messy and coherent, as your church broken, fighting and losing the battle, it so it would seem, as your followers 
thoughts confused, lost and frightened. We are your disciples, alive to the promise, alive to the call and yet confused at the same time. Sometimes I'm uncertain of who we are and who we are meant to be. Yet Lord, we are your children. We are your us and you call us to be your children. Enable us, equip us to fulfill your calling. In Jesus' name we ask. Amen. Thank you for being here this morning. Can I remind you the tea and coffee afterwards? Please do come and share in the hall. There's food as well. So we're going to close by singing in 511. Your hand, O God, is guided. And then after the benediction, our sun blessing is hymn number 786. Now go in peace. It is now five past eleven. <laughs> Son and Holy Spirit descend upon and dwell within your heart.
this day. Remain with you and be with you and all whom you love and share your journey, your story with, now and forevermore. Turkey on a plane, four and a half hours, and for four and a half hours and a wee boy at the back of my seat, kicking my seat, throwing his dummy over and toys, and for four and a half hours we heard, stop it Tyler, stop it, but Tyler didn't stop it, Tyler continued. On the way back we were sitting in the same seats, and we're greatly concerned that Tyler might be joining us again, but thanks to the power of prayer, he wasn't the prayer. Hallelujah. Thanks be to God. <laughs> Take care of yourselves, look after one another, stay safe, stay well, and thank you for being you. And more importantly, <laughs>